Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will talk about statistical distribution. This is uh, part of the advanced mathematics course for teenagers and high school students. It's presented on unizor.com and that's where I suggest you to watch this lecture from um, because the site has for every lecture it has detailed uh, notes which can be used just as a, as a, as a textbook. Uh, plus the site has functionality like uh, enrolling for instance or taking exam etc. So I do recommend you to go to unizor.com to watch this lecture. Now, um, statistical distribution. I have uh, spent some time in a previous lecture explaining what actually statistical distribution is. Um, well, basically in, in a couple of words is uh, you have some random variable and you don't really know um, uh, any uh, distribution of probabilities of this random variable. Sometimes you know the values but you don't know the probabilities. Sometimes you don't know even the values which, in can, which this variable can theoretically take. So your task is uh, based on whatever the experiment results you have, whatever the empirical data you have at hand, um, evaluate the distribution of probabilities of this random variable and, well, using this gives you some picture about its future behavior because that's what probabilities basically is about. So, um, I have subdivided this uh, relatively big task into smaller ones and today we will consider one particular task which I call task A. The task when I have one particular random variable which I would like to evaluate and I know in advance what kind of values it can theoretically take. For instance, if we are talking about rolling the die, we know that it's either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. That's the values which this random variable can take. So we know the random uh, the values of random variable, but we don't know the probabilities because maybe it's ideal uh, die, in which case each probability is equal to 1, 6. Uh, or maybe it's um, not exactly an ideal die and I would like to statistically prove or disprove that this is or is not ideal die. So that's an example. So, okay, so this is our problem. Evaluate the probabilities of known values which our random variable can take using the past experience. Now, what is the past experience? Well, very simply, we basically um, uh, arrange the experiment with this particular random variable. Let's say we have arranged n different experiments, so we have n results. Now, we know that these are uh, different values which it can take. So let's assume that certain number of times out of this n, uh, nu 1, it, uh, the variable took value x one, new two times out of these n uh, random variable took x two, etc., and new k uh, it took the value x k. Well, obviously that equality holds. So we have divided n results into k groups. These are results when the variable took x1, this is x2, and these are the number of results which it took, the very xk. Now, question is, how, could, how can we use these numbers to evaluate the probabilities unknown to us, p1, p2, etc., pk? So, these probabilities we do not know. Okay. Well, the first thing which comes to mind is let's use empirical frequency which is, for instance, it, uh, x1 it took nu1 divided by n times, right? Well, this is empirical frequency of occurring value x1 and most likely that's the best evaluation of the probability p1, right? Because what is the probability? The probability is um, in at least the, the most you know, commonly acceptable um, uh, definition is some kind of a limit uh, this frequency is, is uh, tending to as the number of experiments goes to infinity, right? So that's kind of a, 
assumed understanding of what probability is. It's not really mathematical, it's kind of more logical, I would say, uh, definition of probability. So, that seems to be like a good evaluation. So, our task is right now, number one, to evaluate whether this is an unbiased um, evaluation, which means that considering the new one is actually a, a random variable, considering, you know, C is random variable, new one and new two, etc., they're all randoms, right? So, considering this, question is whether the expectation of this is equal our p1 and it will be equal so that's fine much more difficult problem is to evaluate the margin of error now it's intuitively understandable that as n is increasing the precision of this evaluation should also increase which means it should be closer and closer to p1 now how close that's what margin of error actually is talking about, right? So we will have to evaluate the margin of error. All right, so we can kind of mathematize our problem. Um, and I will be talking mostly about P1 because everything else is exactly the same, right? Okay, so what can we actually do about evaluation of this particular random variable? Well, here's what I suggest. Let's take another random variable beta, which is equal to 1 if c is equal to x1 and 0 if c is not equal to x1. So, this is Bernoulli random variable and we have already spent some time analyzing the Bernoulli's random variable and I do suggest you if you don't remember this go back to previous lectures uh, it's one of the previous lectures um, about Bernoulli distribution and statistical analysis of Bernoulli random variables so I'm introducing this Bernoulli random variable now what's the probability of uh, Now, the probability of uh, beta equal to 1 is exactly the same as the probability of C equals to x1, which is P1, unknown to us, P1, right? Okay. Now, let's talk about this, our empirical frequency. Let's think about it. If we conduct our experiment n times, we have a random variable C taking certain values. At the same time, random variable beta takes certain values. Which ones? Ones or zeros? How many times in our, exper in our n experiments uh, beta took the value of 1? Well, that's the same number when C is equal to x1, which is new 1, right? Okay, so in our n experiments, beta took new 1 times value of 1 and corresponding all other, which is capital N minus new 1 times, it took value of 0. Now, each experiment we can actually uh, consider as a separate random variable which is independent of B and independent among themselves and identically distributed as, 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 as beta. So I can have beta 1, beta 2, etc., beta n. That's how we usually model statistics, right? N experiments result in n different uh, random variables which are, they are independent and identically distributed exactly the same as beta. And um, then what I have, I have some, some number of them, exactly new one number, which happen to be one, and the rest is zero. So, their sum divided by n, which is their average value, is equal to 
nu 1 divided by n which is exactly what we want to use as a variation of our probability p1 so right now basically instead of talking about nu 1 divided by n as a, a random variable which is an approximation of constant p1 we can talk about this as approximation of p1 now this is much more familiar territory because this is something which we have already considered before um, in uh, in the lecture when I'm talking I, I was talking about random variables uh, with Bernoulli distribution right so we know a lot about this so what do we know first let's just think about it first of all expectation of, of our empirical frequency which is expectation of this which is they're all identically distributed and they're all independent so the expectation of their sum is sum of their expectations which in turn is exactly which is an expectation of each one of them which is expectation of B and B uh, I, I'm, I'm talking, uh, um, sorry, beta, not B. And you remember, this is equal to 1 if C is, no, that's equal to 1. And 0 is if C is not equal to X1, sorry, X1, right? So this is P1, and this is obviously 1 minus P1. So the probability of beta 1 or beta 2 etc to be equal to 1 is exactly p1 so the, this thing is equal to p1 p1 times n and divided by n so what does it mean it means that our variation is unbiased which is very good now another thing is what's the very what's the variance Well, you know that variance of this is equal to 1 over n square times variance of beta, right? Because each one of them has exactly the same variance as beta. Now, we know from the Bernoulli variables uh, that this is equal to 1 over, uh, well, times n, obviously, right? Because there are n of them. So the vari uh, variance of beta is equal to p times 1 minus p, right? Well, actually p1. Now, right from here, we see that the precision is increasing as n goes to infinity, right? Because these are constants they are unknown constants, but they are constants uh, and n is increasing, right? so, in any case, our evaluation of p1 as nu1 divided by n, the empirical frequency of occurring value x1 is number one, unbiased because of this and number two, precision is getting better and better as the number of experiments is increasing Well. The only thing is, we have to evaluate how good this particular uh, precision is. We have to evaluate the margin of errors, right? Now, the margin of error can be evaluated in a crude way. Now, you probably remember, again from the Bernoulli lecture, that p times 1 minus p is a function which has such a graph. So in case p is equal to one half, it reaches the maximum. It's a parabola, right? It's a parabola uh, with horns down, and uh, in the middle it has the maximum value, right? So uh, and the maximum value would be when p is equal to one half, which is one quarter. So I can always say that this is less or equal to one over four n, 
from which I can say that um, standard deviation of nu1 over n, which is square root of this, is less or equal to 2 square root of n. And from this, knowing the standard deviation, I can always um, divide uh, divide the uh, the margin of error. Why? Well, because you see, this is uh, an average of independent random variables, right? Uh, which means we can use the central limit theorem and say that this is approximately normally distributed random variable. And for normal variables, we know that, for instance, with certain to level of 95 percent we have margin of error not exceeding two sigma so margin of error with 95 percent probability or certainty rather uh, would be within two sigma which is one over square root of n which is good well let's just consider how good it is let's say you have a a die and you have, let's say, 100 rolls, right? You're rolling it one time, 100 times. So n is equal to 100, uh, which means that 1 over uh, square root of n and times 2 because it's 2 sigma would be 1 tenth. So what you can say is that, for instance, out of 100, you had 15 times number 1. So, which means that 1500s is empirical frequency of number one on the, do, uh, on, 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 uh, uh, on the die. And your precision is one tenth. Well, is it good? One tenth, or actually it's ten hundreds, right? Which means it's from 15 minus 10, which is 5, to 25 hundreds. So that's the probability. Is it a good evaluation? Well, absolutely not. I mean, if we are saying that the probability of one is from one, uh, rolling the one, is from one twentieth to one quarter, that's too wide an interval. We need one six, right? Because that's what ideal die mean. So what I mean is that this is, a, well, it's an estimate uh, of the margin of error, but it's too crude we would like to have a little bit better approximation. So what's the better approximation? Well, you remember we were talking about sample variance. Okay, so let's talk about sample variance and maybe we will get a better variation. Let me try to go through the calculations of sample evaluation. By the way, all the calculations are in the notes for this lecture, so if I will make a mistake, I'm sorry, but in the notes it seems to be correct. So let's try. Now, you remember that if we have, um, l let's go from generality. So you have, for instance, some random variable eta, right? So you have experiments you have average value uh, let's call it zeta ramnets uh, equal to that's average right so the uh, sample um, sample variance is uh, you take this minus zeta square plus the second minus zeta uh, square plus etc plus the last one deviation from the last one from empirical uh, average and you divide it by n minus one remember this formula so this is these are random variables these are the average so these are values basically which we have received from the experiments from n experiments and these are 
the the evaluation of their uh, expectation actually, which means it's arithmetic average. So you have sum of squares divided by n minus one to make the evaluation unbiased. So that's what we are talking about, right? Okay, so let's talk about random variable beta, which we have. So what's the random variable beta? We have b1, etc., beta1, beta n, uh, results of experiments. Now, what is the average? Beta1 plus etc. plus beta n divided by n is this, right? These are 1 or 0, depending on whether our in initial variable took the value x1. So this is number of times out of n it took the value x1, which is nu1 divide, nu divided by n. And we know this, right? So what we have to do is we have to summarize beta, beta j minus nu1 divided by n square summarization for j from 1 to n and divided by n minus 1, right? So that's our um, statistical evaluation of uh, variance, sample variance, all right? So what is it? Let's just calculate. So this is evaluation of beta. Okay, now we know that out of these n, beta took value 1, nu 1 times, and value 0, n minus nu 1 times, right? So I can say that this is equal to, we have nu 1 times, it took value 1, and n minus nu 1 times, it took value 0. So that's our sample variance of beta. Well, let's just open the parentheses. 1 over n minus 1, nu 1 times 1, minus 2 nu 1 squared divided by n plus nu 1 and nu 1 squared so it's nu 1 cubed divided by n squared plus well 0 minus so that's nu 1 squared divided by n squared so it's uh, uh, nu 1 squared divided by n minus nu 1 cube divided by n square equals now this is reduced with this minus 2 and this would be 1 over n minus 1 nu 1 minus nu 1 square divided by n okay fine let me write it a little bit more neatly equals two uh, I would like to have the common denominator so it would be n times n minus one and on the top it would be n times nu1 minus nu1 square, so it would be nu1 times n minus nu1. So that's the um, variance of beta, right? Now, okay, what we are interested in is variance of this, which is a uh, an evaluation, an estimate of our probability P1, right? 
this is approximately p1. So what's the variance of this? Well, if we know the variance of beta, then the variance of sum is equal to sum of variances, right? n goes out with a square, so the variance of nu 1 over n is equal to um, uh, this should be multiplied by n and divided by n squared. So basically it would be this. And this is a variance of our variation. Now, from the variance, we can always go to standard deviation, which is square root of this. Well, n can, goes, uh, can go out. Square root of nu1, n minus nu1, divided by n minus 1. So that's my evaluation of sigma and obviously again from rule of two sigma we can say that two sigma would be a margin of error with 95 percent probability just out of curiosity let's calculate what will be in this particular case of the uh, die when i have 15 times occurring number one so I will have 1 over 100 square root of 15 times 85 divided by 99. So what is this? Um, I didn't do the calculations, but approximately it's 4 times 9, 36, so it's 6. Uh, so it's 6 divided by 10, so it's approximately 6 one thousandths. Okay, now, you remember, it used to be 110, our margin of error, right? Well, actually, I have to double it. It's 2 sigma, so it's 12 one thousandths. So it used to be 1 tenth. Now it's 12 thousandths, which is much better, obviously. Now, with this evaluation, with this um, uh, value of 2 sigma, I can say that it's 15, 100, my probability, plus minus uh, 12, 1 thousandths. Well, that's better, which is 12 thousandths, just a little bit bigger than, uh, than 100, so it's approximately from 14 to 16, 100. So that's my probability which is much closer to 1, 6. I mean, obviously. So this precision is much better than the precision when I was using just that crude evaluation with 1 over 2 square root of n. Well, basically that's it. And I do recommend, obviously, to, to go through a little bit more calculations to get a better evaluation of the margin of errors. But what actually have we accomplished is the following based on certain uh, empirical uh, information, the results of experiments with our random variable C, which can take one of these uh, K different values. So based on the statistics which we accumulated, nu1, nu2, etc., we can uh, evaluate the probability, um, which is obviously an empirical frequency, but not only we, we evaluate the probability, we also evaluate the margin of error using this sigma and two sigma sign. So using these numbers which we have, the experimental numbers, the total number of experiments, and the number of, exp number of times it took the value x1, we evaluate the precision of nu1 divided by n as, as, as an estimate of the probability. Well, obviously, whatever I said about nu1 can be repeated for nu2, nu, 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 nu k. Um, so that's the methodology. You have to, number one, accumulate statistics. Number two, you have to evaluate empirical probabilities, just basically dividing the number of times each value occurs 
to the total number of experiments and then using formula like this you evaluate the margin of error uh, what exactly the probability um, what's what's the range of probabilities which you have evaluated using using this methodology well that's it thank you very much I do suggest you to go through the lecture again uh, through the notes um, it's very very helpful so other than that good luck <laughs>